about 5 kilometers off Gaz Road in Wachiso district near Kampala is the 20 acre flame tree stable owned by Miranda Bowser, a Ugandan of British origin. The healthy looking horses are similar to the ones used in the popular cowboy movies. They are tucked away in the remote village of Chijabijo where not many people appreciate the usefulness of a horse. And that line, the line from the tires. We arrived at the stables at about 10.30 a.m. and found some teams training the horses in preparation for a race in Kenya. Just like an athlete, the horses need regular training to keep fit and strong. They can walk, trot, canter, jump fences. Miranda Bowser says she started out with 14 horses in 2010, but they have since multiplied to 34. But what inspired her to keep horses that are largely considered the pastime for white people and some few rich Ugandans with Western tests? I helped and, and worked with Sadir bringing the horses into Mnyonyo. We then set Flame Tree up as a second base to ride from. The fast and heavy animals have a one egg gestation period and within three years the horse has fully matured. Up to 20 years ago Horses didn't fare well here. I think lots of Ugandans were very excited about horses, but horses died here because of a tsetse fly. is basically fatal for horses. Tsetse fly and horses don't mix. The stables charge 85,000 shillings for every 45 minutes to ride the horse or train to ride it. Natalie Com, who is a horse rider and an instructor, explains that horses love swimming. The company has another stable in Ginger where revelers ride the horse backs as the animals swim. They're very powerful, so you have to you have to hold on here so that you don't get pulled off by the tension of the water. According to John Kinyo, a horse expert said maintaining a horse is not easy. You have to feed them every day balanced diet and you have to monitor their temperature every day to make sure they are they are safe. A horse feeds three times a day. The more you give them work, the more you add them a little bit more amount of food. The more you're not working them hard, the more you reduce. Horse feed includes maize bran, cotton seed cake, wheat bran and corn oil. When the horse makes this sound, it means it's hungry. You're supposed to be measuring the weight to make sure you're maintaining the required weight of a horse. In horse handling, there are several do's and don'ts. Don't ever walk from behind. Always approach your horse from in front, and when you're approaching your horse from the black spot behind, can end up kicking you because never knew that you're there. So when you're approaching your horse from the back side, make sure you talk to your horse. Walk, approach your horse when you're talking to it. The horses are bathed every day to help them cool off in the scorching heat. The stable has a number of horse varieties. We have the ponies which are mainly for kids. They never grow higher. The breed mainly we have here for the bigger horses is called Dara bread. A mature horse costs 15 million shillings and if it's looked after well, the animal can live up to 50 years. Sit back taller when you do that. We are taken through the drills on how to ride a horse. According to the horse owner, uh, that is uh, uh, Melanda, she says that horses behave quite different when they get to meet people with disabilities such as children with autism and even some who are lame and any other person who is handicapped. And of course, like me, it's my lucky day, Chikidi is not complaining. Chikidi, we go. But it's like the horses have an inbuilt slight telepathy they seem to understand that these children need special care, need special assistance. So horses that might be naughty. Keep your hands up. Keep your hands up. All the time they should be there. It takes a lot of practice to perfect riding skills and also to do it safely. With 34 horses, Miranda Bowser probably has the largest stable in Uganda, a country where not many people know or care about horses. Sudil Bjarhanga, NTV.